Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to be covering is something really quick on how to basically get items from specific inventories, but it's with a little, little bit of a catch. It's um, basically going to allow you to uh, set blocks in, or items in a specific inventory that like inventory slot that you can basically test for but it won't actually drop. So for example, in slot zero of this entity right here, what I'm going to be setting currently through an update tick is a green wool. And then in slot one, so this is slot zero and this is slot one will be gold or, or diamond ore. So basically when we place down this entity, all he should drop is diamond ore, as you can see that. So the green wool has basically been removed before the entity died. So I'll be showing you a really easy system to do that. In some cases, actually a lot of cases, the um, system will come really in handy because you'll need to test for certain things and stuff like that. If you want specific code to actually not run and stuff like that, then you can use a very similar method to set up this particular procedure. So let's go into details of how everything works. I'll break down all the different components. Uh, there isn't too many. There's like only four elements, but um, still enough where it can be a little bit overwhelming for some, I guess. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a entity. It doesn't matter all the settings. The only settings that you actually have to worry about is the actual inventory. So depending on how many slots you have in your entity's inventory. For example, I have eight slots in the actual inventory, but one being slot zero is not shown. So I need a total of nine slots. Uh, this would be your slot number. Now a slot number, the GUI number plus one. So generally it's that method, but when you're removing an actual slot, just remember that the total slots can only equal out to nine in the ID count. So in this case, it's from zero to eight, but because we're removed the slot, slot zero, I believe. Yeah, so slot zero, what, what's happened is we're just not displaying that slot, but there's still a total of nine slots. All right, so then you have to basically link up your slot uh, GUI inventory. So the GUI inventory is pretty straightforward. Um, one thing to note though is to start your ID at a advanced number. What you want to do is you want to create a slot and then you want to basically set the slot ID to the number that you basically want to start at. So in my case I did not want slot 0 so I basically just created slot 1 and then I carried on from that point on. Uh, if you want to disable the drops and stuff like that, you can do that for player interaction. Everything else here doesn't really matter. You just need to make sure that the slots that you want to basically display are displayed. And then the slot that isn't, you just make sure that isn't included in the GUI and you should be fine to go. All right. So with that being said, uh, there is the update tick procedure for the entity. Now this is... <clears throat> Uh, basically the trigger for that you could also do it through on internal entity spawn you might not come across the same issue with it um, basically dropping both blocks that's why I've just kept it with the update tick because it's the easiest to show uh, but you could technically spawn it with an inventory uh, under some circumstances though if you're picking up items uh, when the entity walks over them or within certain proximity most likely it will be done through the entity tick update so this is why I'm kind of sticking to that all right so with that particular um, actual event what we're doing is we're basically going to set the item in the um, slot one this is slot one to a diamond ore block so this is basically running there and then the other procedure what we're doing is we're testing if the entity health is equal to or greater than, or pardon me greater than uh, zero so basically slot zero we're basically placing a green wool block so anytime the health is above zero uh, for health so any if they have at least one half heart then this will basically be spawning. 
Uh, this is, again, run through the update tick procedure for the entity. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is if we don't specify if it's greater than zero, it's going to drop. So we want to make sure that this is set up. To find these blocks, you go under flow control for the if statement. The uh, op number operator it can be found under the logic, and then you want this one. Click on the equal sign, select greater than. For the number block, then you want to basically just place this here. Yeah, it's the only number block in the um, top list. It's somewhere in there. It should be in there. And then for the entity health, then you want to go to entity data and then scroll a bit down. And there should be one that says current health of event slash target entity. And then you just place that there like that. Uh, for the inventory block, you go under entity management and then scroll down. It should be this one right here. Uh, with the number slot, there's actually two there. Um, one's for the armor slot. You kind of have to pay attention to which one it is uh, for that. But you want the one that basically is this one right here where it says in slot zero. And that's the slot. That's the one that we want to actually specify. And then you just basically select your item by double clicking on it and basically selecting whatever one you want. So that's basically that. And uh, again, this is the same block as that. So you have all the information on that. All right, so after you've done that, um, you can set up any AI properties or anything like that. that any, everything after that point doesn't really matter as long as the inventory is linked. Uh, the actual script to make sure that the entity doesn't drop it needs to be set up like this. Uh, you want a global procedure for all entities. And then you're gonna specify the type of entity being our one that we just created. Uh, the global procedure is before entity is hurt. And you might have noticed that there is uh, the dependencies on the left hand side or right hand side for uh, entity, source entity, amount, X, Y, and Z, and world. So we want to actually specify the amount. Uh, this is a little bit different from my usual tutorials. Usually I just show the procedure blocks. However, when you come across a global procedure that has something that you can't find in any of the uh, actual math operators and stuff like that, or logic, you can't find it. Most likely it's a specific dependency that you can actually add support for. So for example, amount can be added or tested for the amount of damage applied if you go under advanced and then there should be the same color that we're basically displaying in the dependency so in this case it's a number one and then you would basically type the exact same uh, dependency name case sensitive so amount and this will test for the amount of damage being dealt to the entity so basically that's what I've done here I basically applied the amount I'm subtracting the amount or the current health from the amount. So, or the help. Uh, the current health is being, we're subtracting the amount from the current health. So basically we're already testing if the amount of damage that we're basically applying to the entity is equal or equal to or less than zero. So basically if the health is something like, we'll say one heart, and we're dealing five hearts, then that would basically go ahead and bring it down to negative four hearts. This would be less than, equal to or less than zero because it's negative four hearts. I know that that doesn't really make sense, but it will always run this procedure. So after that, what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and then set the inventory to air for that slot that we don't want the drop to actually drop. So in our case, we're just setting it to slot zero. We're selecting air for our, basically our block that we're replacing the slot with. And then this will make it so it won't actually drop. So again, uh, to find all these blocks you, for the entity one, um, again, we'll go, or for the F statements, we'll go under flow control, grab the F statement. We need two of these. So it's like this. And then what we need is we need to go and grab under logic. There is a is entity subtype. We're going to place that right here. We're going to select our entity that we want to make sure this happens with. And then we want to go to logic again, grab a number operator. And then we're going to set this equal sign to equal to or less than. 
So the less than sign is always pointing towards the left and the equal to or less than is the one with the underscore underneath the less than sign. So like this one right here. And then what we're doing is we're going to need a number. So we're going to set the number to zero. And then we need a math operation. So we're going to basically go and place down that from math. It's just the one with the plus sign there. And then we're going to set this to subtract by clicking on the plus sign. And then, and then we have some options. After we've done that, we need to go to entity data and we're going to get the current health of the entity. And then lastly, we need to go again to the advanced tab and grab the dependency name for the number and we're going to say amount. And then the only other thing that we need to do is go to entity management, scroll down, grab that block for setting the slot for the particular item or block and set this to error and specify the slot ID that we're basically going to want to remove for that slot. You can set multiple slots as well. If you wanted to set like slot one or whatever, or slot 10, if the entity had slot 10 slots, then you could basically specify those uh, slot numbers under this particular procedure. You don't need to make separate ones for it. You can just run it under this condition. All right, so that's basically that. Um, again, we'll go into game and I'll show you now that you have a good understanding how everything works I'll show you how it works again and then we'll cut out so all right so we're in game again so I'll just demonstrate this one last time so if we place down the entity uh, we can see that he has the diamond ore in his inventory now he's also going to have the green wool in slot zero which we haven't actually specified so we can hide the green wool it's nowhere around here we can kind of hover around and there's nothing so as soon as we kill him he only drops the um, diamond ore so again if you found this tutorial helpful uh, definitely consider subscribing rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out